Hello all uh, and welcome to this webinar uh, on the new release of uh, MapleSim Web Handling Library. We recently released MapleSim 2022.2 and with it uh, came a new version for the uh, MapleSim Web Handling Library. And we thought it's a good time to give, give an update uh, on what we have been doing and um, also uh, what we have planned beyond uh, this current release. Uh, so uh, in, in uh, today's webinar, uh, I'll uh, briefly talk about the um, uh, library itself, give you an, an overview uh, of the library, uh, and then uh, jump direct to the new features in 2022.2. And the part that I'm also very excited about is to talk to you about what we have planned uh, or the features that we have currently uh, in development. So uh, that should give you a, a glimpse into uh, what will be available in the next release uh, and beyond. Okay, so um, this, um, this webinar today uh, is uh, really focuses on uh, new features and uh, what comes next. I'm not going to uh, do a deep dive into the um, library itself, um, but there are a ton of things that, a uh, ton of features and different types of applications that you can tackle in terms of simulation with the web handling library in particular and MapleSim in general. Uh, so I thought maybe it's a good idea to just uh, put them on the screen. So if, if you uh, have ideas or um, areas of simulation that would match these topics, then we definitely should talk. But if you have not seen MapleSim or the web handling library before, what I would suggest is to head over to our uh, YouTube channel uh, at uh, MapleSoft YouTube channel and uh, look for the web handling videos that we have already up. So there are a number of um, recorded webinars that are available that uh, uh, spend the time uh, talking about the library, how to model different systems, and the basic features of the tool. Uh, so I definitely suggest that uh, if you have not seen this, um, this library or MapleSAM, check those videos out. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do a quick review about uh, the library itself. So, Version one came um, with MapleSim 2021.2. It included uh, obviously the web material and a span and a number of rollers to and uh, nip rollers, um, sources and sync, uh, both uh, wind and unwind drums and also boundary condition, really, really important to simplify a lot of models and uh, sen sensors to uh, emulate what you would uh, uh, have in the in the actual system, in, in a simulation in MapleSim, you have access to all variables. Uh, so you don't really need a specific sensor, but these are there to kind of replicate what a real sensor would do. Um, so that's, that's uh, for convenience there. And the primitives are things that we, we use to hold things in place or move things around depending on the system we are building. Uh, the next release of the library was with MapleSim 2022.1 earlier this year, and that saw the addition of the laminating sub package to the web handling library. The laminating sub package allows for merging of uh, two or more webs into one. Uh, so that, that was the main addition that came uh, online uh, in 2022.1. Uh, and finally, the current release, the most recent release, is the with MapleSim 2022.2, 20, uh, which as you can see, um, adds added more components to the library and also uh, some enhancement to, um, to uh, some other components. I've only highlighted the main ones here. Um, it, with each iteration of uh, library, a lot of things get changed, but these are the major ones. So we're gonna uh, spend a little uh, time on these new features, but before that, let's just get a warm up. Um, if you have access to MapleSim 2022.1 or two, if you have one, you can update to two, but if you have access to 0.2, uh, you should know that the tool comes with a lot of uh, 
built-in examples. And uh, with this latest release, we added more examples. These are, um, these help uh, with understanding how each uh, of the new components uh, work and also give you uh, some pieces that you can uh, pick apart and uh, reassemble for your own modeling purposes. So these are very good place to start to get to know the library, uh, whether you are uh, starting to learn it or you just want to find out uh, more for yourself what the new uh, components do. So as I said, let's just start with some warm up examples. Um, and uh, as I said, uh, if you uh, head down to those videos, you will get a lot more of what I am um, talking about here. So the web handling library part of MapleSAM uh, is, uh, uses a, a um, block diagram approach where you have components that are representing different pieces of your system. Here, the system being a roll-to-roll -roll process. Uh, you should be able to identify the pieces on the screen. We have on the left an unwind drum span between each of the rollers. Uh, and you can see even the icons tell you that whether the web goes over or under. And uh, in this case, we have a Revolut join for a dancer system. There's a sensor, there's a gain, a, a desire, uh, a reference value, and a PID that sends the value to the brake that is going to try to maintain the tension even though the velocity of the downstream is changing. So that's an that's example of a, a, a line uh, model that is dynamic and is going to react to the uh, environment or uh, variations. So just to uh, give you a, a visual um, clue of how these components work together, I kind of mix it here with the 3D as well. So you can see where the revolute joint is at the bottom of the dancer arm, um, the sensor measures the, the rotation of that revolute joint, which is a spring loaded. And the, the value of the PID is sent back to the uh, torque applicator. In this case, acts as a brake, which then uh, adds resistance to the unwind drum, uh, keeping the results, um, uh, the tension is steady. This, this example is actually part of the examples in MapleSAM. So again, if you do have access, uh, you, can, you can run this on your own and uh, um, go deeper into the meaning of different components and how it works. Another example that I wanna bring up uh, is a, uh, a larger line with more rollers. Uh, you would notice that um, the, there is color change in the web and this color change uh, indicates the um, the um, tension value in each span. Um, so if I run the animation one more time, you notice that um, the first we have a tension that is gradually increasing from upstream to downstream. And that's because the, uh, the rollers have um, drag in this model. Uh, and uh, by adding a torque control uh, rollers, uh, by activating them, in, um, in a sequential manner, we can, we can basically observe how the tension uh, is changing. And uh, uh, depending on what values we have set for the colors, uh, we can get a quick visual clue of uh, how the system is performing. Obviously, um, colors are not the only output from the system. We actually can get the time histories. So I'm going to quickly jump to MapleSAM and uh, talk about this model a little bit more. Let me just do that. And I have that model here. So we can, when, when we run a simulation in MapleSAM, we get the 3D just as you saw in the video. But on top of that, we get the uh, probes and uh, or the variable plots or time histories. In this case, the way these uh, plots are uh, extracted from the simulation by the use of a technique uh, with summary uh, variables. These are internal variables to each component that uh, collect uh, uh, in information that we feel the users uh, want to see. Uh, for example, for the uh, spans, one of the summary variables that you can, after the simulation plot, would be summary tension. For the roller, we have uh, summary slip velocity, summary uh, wrap angle, and uh, so on. So each component will have its own uh, list of summary variables uh, so that you, once your simulation is performed, you can, you can plot them on the screen uh, for different type of uh, investigation that you're doing. And that is easily found out uh, 
for, for a system by just searching summary in the uh, list for all the variables of the system. And um, different, as I said, different components have different groups of uh, summary variable associated with them. Uh, it, as at the bottom of the list, uh, we have uh, just an example, UD1 is the name of the component. And this one has only one summary variable and is summary radius. And if we go back to the canvas, we can find out what, which one is UD1. Uh, obviously, after some, uh, ex um, some uh, experiments and some um, more non knowledge and get to use, uh, getting to use to uh, build models, this becomes a lot more easier to find. So I'm going to activate the or show the labels. And I can see the UD1 is my unwind drum. And the unwind drum has an internal summary variable for its uh, radius, which is changing as, uh, as the roll is unwinding. Uh, so that, that, that um, radius can be plotted. And um, as you will uh, see in the videos that I refer to, there is a lot of options for each of these components that allows you to uh, make it exactly what you are, uh, want to build. As you can see, even for this unwind drum that we are focusing on, there is a list of parameters uh, from the uh, geometrical, uh, mechanical, and even visualization. All of that uh, are available to you to take control and make the component exactly matching your system. Okay, so I'm gonna jump back because we have a lot of ground to cover. So I'm gonna go to the to uh, this one. This is, as I mentioned in the uh, previous release, this uh, laminating uh, sub package was added to the Maple Stem, and I thought I'll, I'll add a video to my webinar today. Um, there is a lot to investigate on here, but I will leave that uh, to you to investigate or review our videos. Okay, so let's, uh, with that um, warm up, let's go and uh, take a look at the new um, items in MapleSim 2022.2. We're going to start with the um, uh, SRAP rollers or roller pair. Uh, these are two rollers that are um, arranged in a way that the, the web goes in S uh, configuration inside them, a uh, common configuration in a lot of um, uh, web lines and is used um, typ typically to uh, create uh, uh, high tension differences between different zones of your web line uh, without uh, inducing slippage. So as you can see, two of these components are used in this model. And um, uh, that that back-to-back uh, uh, -back creating a large uh, tension difference because these are actuated. This model is actually in MapleSim. So just to demonstrate how you would uh, get that, I go to, through the examples and find the web line number two, which is this component with the two side-by-side -side, um, SRAP rollers uh, created in the web line. You see the team in the building of these models is that we have uh, boundary conditions, whether wind or unwind or um, source and sync. Then we have a span roller, a span roller, a span roller to build our, um, uh, the system. Jumping back to the slide and continuing, the next item is the uh, web converting. Uh, so um, MapleSim 2022.1 uh, already had a, a feature to allow multiple web material in a, in a single uh, web line. So you can hand off from one material to another, but web converting does it in a continuous way, as in it assumes that the uh, mass is conserved. Uh, so you can uh, imagine you have a, com a convert pro converting process that would uh, um, just compress and changes the thickness. Uh, so if you do that, uh, more material is going to be with the same width is going to be needed, so the speed will change uh, if the density is, is, remains the same. Or if you change the density, you will have the consequence of that uh, applied to the web. The web converting component does not model the converting process. It models the fallout of the com com converting process. So it's a, it's a sort of an abstraction of, uh, of a conversion. So uh, to use it, you need to know the before and after the converse, uh, converting process, the, uh, the material properties or the web uh, properties before and after. Then this can be used to, um, to, 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 to the simulation, be able to continue uh, capturing the dynamics of the system, tensions, the strains, and so on. 
If you use a, a different approach, like using different material, then we can potentially simulate cases where, uh, for example, material is cut from the web and they're scrapped, they don't carry any tension, so they're just removed. Uh, that can be done with just regular uh, span component and just switching from one web properties to another at a given point, which uh, would indicate where the process occurs. So there's definitely some abstraction involved. Uh, then another uh, component uh, that is added to the uh, web handling library is a roller can uh, that can come to contact with the web and also detach from the web. There are certain systems that this type of uh, mechanism is seen. So um, I, I thought uh, it's, it's actually quite uh, intriguing, this type of uh, simulation. So this component allows uh, for, uh, for this, uh, for the, um, contact and detachment between web and roller happen. Regular uh, rollers do not have this extra uh, complication. So if you don't have uh, a web roller separation, you would not use this component because it is computationally more expensive. Uh, you see that that uh, blue, um, light blue hue over there, the roller icon, that means that the slippage is by default included in the contact. Uh, roller in regular rollers, you have the choice to include or not include slippage depending on uh, where your focus is in your modeling. But for the contact roller, slippage is always on. So when the roller comes into contact with the web, we actually will have a slippage before the speed um, uh, catches up if, if uh, assuming the tension and the coefficient of friction is, is the right value. Moving on, uh, the next item uh, is back in the uh, spans uh, sub package. And this one is a discretized uh, web uh, span that uh, allows for the uh, inclusion of gravity effect on the, on the web. So uh, probably not a very common uh, piece in various models, but for uh, thicker material, uh, this, this might come into play at least something that you would experiment with to see if that's an issue in your model or not, depending on what the span length is, what densities are you're feeding to your, to your web line. This would be also uh, compared to the uh, non-sagging um, um, uh, span. This is a lot more computationally expensive. So this will be used when it is needed, not just everywhere, because that would make the model very heavy computationally. But other than that, it will act just like the span in terms of what it can connect to and uh, the depend uh, and also in terms of what values you can get out of it. Um, it's uh, in, in, in sagging case uh, and uh, not heavy uh, material, you will see that the tension in this component is actually be very, very small, but it can be tensioned. Uh, the, the sag is still gonna be remained, but it will be negligible. But if you have those cases, you will switch to a more simpler model that is more efficient. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to uh, switch gears and um, go to Mapleson Insight. Um, uh, before do doing that, I'm going to introduce the model that I have picked to, uh, to go to Insight first. So let me jump back to Mapleson and bring up that model uh, and have a look at it before we see what it means to go to Insight with it. So this is the model. I'm going to turn off this uh, right panel so we can see the entire model here. So it is a, it's a series of uh, rollers. Uh, each roller includes a drag in there, which is parameterized. So if I actually open this one more time, we see that uh, this model is, has some parameters for easy access uh, that are scattered through these components, like the drag, the uh, webline velocity, the upstream tension, and uh, there are six motors um, are included in this uh, web line that the user can uh, uh, assign a torque value or a maximum torque value uh, so that uh, they can see the effect of that. So just like the other uh, case that we saw, drag causes the tension to gradually increase and that might push the material to outside of their, their nominal or uh, safe uh, limit. So this, this approach can be, um, be used to um, see what, what type of torque required where. Uh, so if, if we run this in MapleSim, uh, we see what we expect. So right now, all, as you saw, all motor torques are 
zero. And we see uh, this is a startup simulation. And as the rollers speed up, the effect of the drag is going to be um, uh, sensed in the sense of uh, variation of the uh, uh, span tension from one span to the next. So in MapleSim, we can we have those parameters. We can change them, run the simulation, change them again. But in a lot of application, not just in web handling, in um, in automation in general, or even other fields, uh, building a model is just one step. The next step would be to um, to pair it with the uh, with the automation or the PLC code, and that's where um, the the feature of MapleSim that again also applies to the web handling library comes into play and that is the ability to be able to export the model so that automation tools can import it and uh, use it as a digital twin to test the, the actual controller against it instead of the real machine. So uh, not going to be talking about the automation part uh, but I'm going to demonstrate what that uh, export would look like. So MapleSim does come with a uh, with a tool, uh, a lot of different tools. One of those tools would be for uh, creating an FMU. Uh, FMU is based on the functional mockup interface standard, and MapleSim can generate FMU from any model that you create inside it. So I'm not going to go through that uh, that process because I've already created the FMU for this model, and I'm going to switch to the folder and uh, run the FMU, and this. FMU is uh, going to be uh, run in the um, um, the MapleSim Insight, um, which allows me to um, check the FMU, uh, make sure that it is doing what it's supposed to be doing, and also it would allow me to interact with it. So we'll see after this uh, demo of Insight, uh, there are three different modes of operation when it comes to Insight and interacting with the FMUs, and this is just one of them. So we have the system. Uh, it's not running yet. Uh, we can adjust the uh, quality of the picture and the animations. We can also look at uh, plots if we want to. But let's go ahead and interact with this model. So I'm going to go to the, um, the mode of operation of Insight that allows me to run uh, models. And uh, what I see in this um, section that I have uh, I'll, I'll, I'll skip the initial conditions, but I have parameters. These are parameters that I can change before the simulation. Like the, I, this is what I have, uh, this is my design. So I decided these parameters should be fixed as in I cannot change them during the simulation, but these parameters are the ones that I can change during the simulation. So we leave the default of the uh, upstream tension and velocity uh, as, as uh, created from MapleSim and just go ahead and run this um, FMU. So just like we saw in MapleSim, uh, under no uh, motor torque, uh, we see that uh, the, um, the, the web tension gradually increases from uh, uh, the upstream to downstream. Now, what we can do is we can go ahead and activate motors. So let's, let me activate a bunch of these motors. 10 for you, 10 for you and 10 for you. So now we have these motors in torque mode uh, activated and that, uh, that results in uh, more harmonized uh, tension throughout the web line. Obviously this is just an example to demonstrate, but uh, you can imagine uh, instead of me interacting with parameters, this can be done automatically via a controller that dictates what torque is needed based on the sensors that are incorporated in the model. So this is just a, a very small a demo of the uh, FMU in a, in a live simulation, but instead of a PLC, I am controlling it. So let me just, um, before I move on from this topic, just uh, finish up the uh, different modes of operation. Um, okay. Maybe I, just a quick second. Oh, I did not turn this on. OK, just going back to it. All right, so um, the, um, the, the first step for uh, getting access to Insight would be to generate the model as an FMU, which is pretty straightforward from any model. And uh, three modes of operation that I have uh, included here 
One would be you create an FMU and then import it in a third party tool. At that point, you don't need MapleSim anymore. But if you do have MapleSim inside, MapleSim inside will act as a visualization tool. So the third party tool will run the FMU, but then that FMU, uh, because it has a special features for MapleSim inside, will stream these results so that not only you can see the plots and traces and all of that, if you wish, you can see the, the, the animation of the system in, in action as well. Uh, mode number two, which was the demo that I have uh, just shown you, is that we just use MapleSim Insight to run the FMU. In mode number one, Insight is not running the FMU, just displaying. And then there is mode number three, which is more advanced, where we can use uh, Maple software, uh, which is our flagship pro product for analysis, and that also can take over Insight and uh, work with that. But I leave that out for today's uh, session. Okay. So let's, uh, let's move on. Uh, I'm really excited about this part. Uh, this, these features are uh, not yet available in MapleSim, but they are in various uh, stage of completion. So uh, I, what I would ask you is that uh, if any of the topics that I'm going to be talking about uh, from this point on is of interest to you in the type of problems that you are uh, trying to solve through simulation, do give us a call, um, uh, even if the, the, the feature is not officially available. There are ways that we can work together and make sure that uh, you can move your simulation forward. So the, the first one that we are working on, and this comes up a lot, uh, is air, air entrainment. So we are going to uh, follow uh, some very good publication on this field, uh, starting with the Knox Sweeney formula and some of the enhancement to it uh, for side leakage. Uh, so this is, this is something that we are working on. Um, so uh, this, this would uh, basically create a um, roller that instead of a constant friction or a friction that is only dependent on velocity, it will create a uh, roller with friction that is uh, dependent on uh, parameters that needs to be specified by the user and also tension and uh, roller and web velocities independently. So um, in terms of the mechanics of it working, it is a straightforward. Uh, we just need to put the right equations in, in together to make sure that it is, from an engineering standpoint, a useful addition to the library. The other one that we are looking at is the, uh, there are different mechanisms for wrinkles. And uh, the one that uh, I'm really hoping that will be part of um, the next release of MapleSim would be wrinkles or the probability of creation of wrinkles due to over tensioning. Um, when we say wrinkles here, I'm not talking about actually simulating the folding and the, the, the nonlinear effect that comes from it. Uh, uh, instead, this will be a post-processing. Once you run your simulation, you get the velocities, tension, strains, um, everything from all the spans in your model. Then you go into post-processing, very likely in Maple, and then run the uh, wrinkle calculation or the uh, calculation required for finding a limit. And then you can assess whether different spans in your system is uh, at risk of uh, creating wrinkles. So that, that is the idea. It will be a post-processing tool. Uh, and it's, you will uh, hopefully find it where we just uh, picked up the FMU generation app. It's going to be one of the apps. And uh, so any model, web handling model that you run in MapleSim, then afterwards you jump into the app and you say, uh, calculate the probability or the, the threshold for, for different span. And then you com uh, compare it with the suggested value to see what is it, what are the chances of uh, issues in your web line. Uh, the other one that uh, also uh, in our interaction with customers have, have um, popped up uh, quite a few times and uh, I'm very excited to add it to the next release would be um, imperfect rollers, um, uh, whether wine or unwind drums or the actual rollers. So we're going to start with the uh, simplest one, which is the eccentric uh, roll. And as you can see, this, this is even currently doable. It might be a little bit more uh, advanced to put it together, but I, this, this, this example that I'm showing here, I use the current component in the library to create this. We're hoping for the next release is just be a new option for the rollers that you say, make it eccentric. And uh, the icon will indicate that this, this roller is not imperfect. And you will select the eccentricity. And as you see on the screen, you will be able to uh, 
um, uh, see the fallout of such an imp imperfection in your simulation. Uh, the next one uh, is uh, it's, it's um, a very interesting addition to uh, the, the library. This will be a, um, a, a NIP role, which is specifically for, um, uh, for the semi-rotary uh, die cutting applications. Uh, so this, this NIP role, uh, uh, unlike the NIP roles in the MapleSim uh, um, library that don't include slippage, this one has a slippage. Not only that, it includes a variable slippage. So when the uh, angle, the arc angle, where the die and anvil are going to engage are facing each other, the, the friction would be high enough that prevents a slippage. But when they're away, it's going to be a regular capstan uh, limit for the friction. So uh, we're hoping to actually put this to good use um, sooner rather than later. But uh, this is also going to be officially part of the next release of uh, MapleSAM. Uh, the other one would be somewhat opposite uh, of what we saw in the laminate, where we merge two, uh, two or more branches together to create a new branch. Uh, this one is for separating uh, only one to two. And uh, this is also in uh, has, has some development, as you can see in this example on the screen. This is uh, more than a concept now, and uh, I'm really, really uh, looking forward to add that as a new roller type that allow branching from one to two uh, in the library to uh, MapleSAM. Uh, you will specify the web properties both for the incoming branch and the, the two that are going out uh, so that you can, you can continue each branch with the, with the appropriate uh, web material. And finally, uh, for, the, for the future uh, release or features would be the Poisson effect. Uh, so uh, this already is calculated in MapleSAM, uh, but it's, it's not um, viewed or uh, returned to the, to the user. Um, in some applications, when we have high Poisson ratio and large tensions, uh, the actual shrinkage is important. Um, uh, so we are going to make it available both visually and also as a summary variable to the user so that for those special cases and special material, stretchy material, uh, they can get a, get a, a sense of uh, how the web behaves. And um, I think I'm a bit, I'm bit, bit over the time, but uh, this was, this was uh, um, the, the material that I have selected for uh, today's update webinar on the web handling library. Uh, as, I, uh, as I said uh, earlier, if you feel like any of the features that are currently available, definitely check them out or contact us. And if the new features that we are working on is of interest to you, uh, definitely contact on again, contact us again, and we can, we can work uh, with you on that, especially these new features that are being developed, they're not developed all at the same time. So uh, depending on your use case and how we work together, you would be able to influence the process as well.